going here. Um, how's everybody doing? Let's see, how do I see if I'm live? I'm just keep refreshing. Keep refreshing. Go okay. to home. Hold on one sec here. I'll just trying to bring up your guys's comments. Hold on. Should be easy. Look for me. There it is. Oh. All right. I can see y'all on Facebook. Let me see if I can refresh. You said? Mm -hmm. Ah. Yay. All right. Record now. No thanks. All right. Got it. Okay, I'm going off of the thing. All right. Hi, guys. Hi, Angel from Houston. Hi, Pam from Louisiana. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Realize I'm completely silly. <laughs> okay. This is a real package on my head. <laughs> Hi, Kathy. <laughs> Hi, Peggy from Mississippi. <laughs> okay, I'm okay. I'm serious. I've had one sip of beer, so I know. Linda Wood from Texas. Hi, Jennifer from Alabama. Hi, Beth Patrick from Ohio. Beth, you're the Beth, right? Beth, I have your number still. I haven't forgot about you in the 35. It's literally in pieces over here. My husband was working on getting it uh, put back together so I could send you some actual pictures. Hi, Faye. Faye, I still am trying to track down your package. It says that it's coming. It's just delayed. I, I know you really want your table, so I'm tempted to just send you a second package. And then if the first one shows up, you can um, send back the other one. Hi, Mel. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Pam from Minnesota. Is there a blizzard going on? <laughs> There's not. <laughs> Hi, Pauline. Oh, she said y'all because she's from Houston. Y'all look cute. Hi, Elizabeth. You do. Oh, you don't sound good. I, I'm good. No, I'm, I'm not sick or anything. She said you okay. <laughs> Hi, Kathy Klein from Decatur, Illinois. And hi, Donna. Thanks for joining us. Oh, uh, Bridget says, I just love your daughter. Me too. <laughs> oh, yay, Jackie got her walking foot today. Super. <laughs> oh, Mel says hi. Mel, we got your picture. Ray was able to uh, get it up on a slide. <laughs> she says, you're the perfect elf. <laughs> hi, Kathleen. Thank you so much for sending your picture in with your sweater. She said, it's cold and rainy in SoCal. Oh, couldn't get on Facebook today. That's strange. Nancy's on. Hi. Hi, Sue Marshall. Merry Christmas to you, too. All right, guys. Well, I'm a bit of a liar. Oh, hi, Linda from Tennessee. Um, I'm a bit of a liar. We are supposed to be working on um, the scrappy snow um, snowball mug rugs. And, you guys, I'm not ready for Christmas yet, so... <laughs> Reagan and I are here working on Christmas quilts. <laughs> Queen Creek, Arizona. Hi, Audrey. Audrey. Thanks for joining us. Good evening from cold Wisconsin. Brr, that doesn't sound good. Miss Bonnie Pelton. Merry Christmas, my friend. I loved the picture of you and your pup pup. What was his name? Winston? Oh, I need to move. Oh, what happened? Hold on. You can just move it with the Ooh, okay. All right. Wrapping and watching. Glad you are well. <laughs> I'm sipping and trying to sew. <laughs> oh, I'm drinking tonight, in case anybody is curious. I'm drinking Bad Santa Ale by Pelican Brewery in Oregon. It's very similar. It's a dark ale. It's very similar to my favorite, one of my favorite beers, which is called Quilter's Irish Death out of Ellensburg, Washington. It's really good. <laughs> we are sipping responsibly tonight. Okay, so this is what our plan is. So you guys know I've been working on a quilt for my son. And I finally have all 66, or 64, I'm sorry, 64 blocks done. 
Look. Woo! There's so much tulle in here. It just makes me happy. Oh, Willow. Willow the cute. And she's a um, Shizu, right? She was very cute. Hi, Cindy and Jen. Jen, are you listening? <laughs> oh no, Cindy in Michigan is getting hammered with snow. That's exciting. Uh, over on Instagram a few minutes ago, I showed the smidge of snow we still have in our yard from a couple of nights ago. We got an unexpected couple of inches up here on the top of the hill in Redmond, Washington. Ray and I thought it was fun. We took my car out. Um, it was not unsafe. It was the roads were still, you know, slushy or whatever. So we went out for a little cruise and um, we got significantly more snow than other parts of Redmond and Kirkland because we're kind of up here on the hill. So, so tonight we are working on the backing. So I have all my blocks, my, all my 64 blocks done. I'm going to be webbing those together here shortly, but the backing, so this quilt is going to be 96 inches square. Sandy Reese likes our sweaters. <laughs> um, so the backing is going to be, I bought six yards of regular quilter's cotton in just plain black because my son just wouldn't really appreciate. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Why do you always do that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like she just starts sneezing the minute the camera goes on. Uh, Jennifer says, my Christmas came and went yesterday as wonderful family time. And when it was done, it's too quiet in the house. I'll be, you guys can pick me up in my, my sad place at the beginning of January after both the kids that are flying in leave. So my son comes in Christmas morning, like really early, pretty excited about that. Um, and then I have another daughter coming in. Not one that I actually like. Biological. Not my biological daughter. She's a daughter I picked up along the way when we lived in Arizona. And she's really special to me. And she's a really good friend of Ray's from dance. And so she's flying in the day after Christmas for five days. So I have all the kids home. Yay! <laughs> oh, um, Kathleen says, cute. These are fasteners. Well, technically, Kathleen are headbands. But mine's a little top heavy because it's an actual box on my head hello deb from minnesota i she's not well deb you're in good company she says i'm not ready for christmas either anyway so to, in order to make my backing big enough 96 inches i'm gonna make a big piano key strip so i want you to alternate like black to gray with the colors i have all these extra strips left over from the quilt so we're going to use these to kind of piano key down. Make sure that you keep one edge really straight because that I'm going to measure to cut off of the one edge. Oh, I wanted to give you a, um, a thing, a thread color. Hold oh, please, I have to get something. So now you can just go tink there. All right, Dave Reagan's machine and upgrade here. I just finished my king size lap quilt last night, sixty four blocks. Yep, that's what the I'm in that or that in I'm in that uh, play yard, Kathy. I still have to long arm this once yeah, I get done with it. So all we're gonna do is you're just gonna keep building on one, one end here. So grab a color strip like that and just keep adding. All right. Hi, Judy. How you doing? Mel said our daughter flies in in three hours. Yay. We are overjoyed, got her enormous quilt she got her enormous quilt a few years ago. She gets her Christmas pajamas for Christmas, unicorn and stars. Perfect. I like it. Of 
Cole is actually getting um, two quilts this year. I've had his other one done a while. I just haven't um, put the binding on yet, so he's going to get two. Hi, Debbie, for Kentucky. Thanks for joining us. Santa's workshop is in full effect here. We are not doing the mug rugs tonight. We're going to do them next week on Wednesday um, because I am not done with my Christmas stuff yet. And here we are in the 11th hour. I feel like a real, like, really, like, Santa's workshop still cranking away here. <laughs> Hi, Joanne Keeney. Thanks for joining us. Oh, Rose is on. Hi. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you. Lisa, Merry Christmas to you, my sweet. Ready to leave on a 1,500-mile drive? Judy, where are you going? Deb will be doing that for me as soon as I get... Oh, is Deb your long armor, Deb Schmitty? That's funny. Uh-oh, Rogue's in trouble. He's whining. Because, you know, the lab thinks it's dinner time. It's an hour early. Oh, Mel says, yeah, mach her machine is super loud. Um, it's because this is an aftermarket motor that actually smells like it needs a little a little grease. I'll have to get hit that a little later. Um, it hasn't seen much uh, attention lately. Black. Yeah, just I'm just alternating like color in with the neutral it? strips. Do I do? Is it like gray black color? I'm not trying. I'm trying to make it kind of random, so it doesn't really matter. Ooh, 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 ooh. So, guys, oh, Florida for the winter, nice. I uh, totally messed up my back yesterday, sitting in my not great sewing chair all day working on those blocks. I um, was not moving very well this morning. Let's just put it that way. So we are standing tonight instead of sitting because I think that's actually easier on my back. So <laughs> fun. I know I'm trying to figure out what long arm pattern I'm going to put on Coles because I just want it to be kind of simple. Judy sounds like she's a snowbird. We also call them winter visitors. I think, oh, yes, and she is closer to the mic. Actually, we should move that away from your machine. That's a good, thank you for saying that. That's actually a good point. Okay. Ooh, boop, 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 there. All right, let's see if, let's see if her, um, it sounds a little better now, Deb. Okay, I'm gonna, oop, oop. it's there. Okay, let's see how this sounds. Do you guys like to piece your backings too? I like to use everything that I have in a quilt kit and not have anything left over when I'm done. Hey, what is the fun unless you are on the 11th hour on Christmas Eve? Yes. I could have actually done without this kind of fun. <laughs> Rachel, Rachel Vaughn. Hi, Merry Christmas. Oh, Mel says, I love Ray's machine. Isn't it pretty? Yes, Rachel Harris is on. Hi, friend. Rage, uh, Ray has claimed the yellow machine. It actually was available for sale for a while. And um, I landed up having to switch the motor out because it wasn't fast enough for me. So this is an aftermarket motor. And so it just screams, I mean, super fast. And so Ray kind of claimed it as her own. So now it just belongs to her. <laughs> Santa needs to get you a new chair in instead of a coffee machine. <laughs> Elizabeth, if you only knew how true that was. <laughs> no, Santa's love language is coffee machines, though, so I have a feeling that's what's under the tree for me. Some type of uh, coffee 
accessory. Last year I got a cup that self-heated. So it keeps my coffee warm. That way I can, you know, I don't have to drink it so fast. Yeah, Deb says she likes pieced backings too. I really like, it just makes it look like a whole second quilt if you, you know, give it a little bit of extra attention. Penny, hi Penny. Uh, welcome back to the Northwest, thank you. We are making a some piano keys, Penny, for my son's quilt, I'll show you here. I bought a just a regular piece of um, like quilter's cotton for the back and it's still not quite wide enough. It's a 96 inch square quilt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make piano keys like a big cutout, probably at least 14 and a half inches. I'll trim this square. Ray's also working on it. These are leftover pieces from the quilt. Um, so that's what we're doing. Okay, thank you so Twisted Wilson. <laughs> I think her, the speaker, was right up against the, her motor, so that's why it sounded like a freight train. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Trying to put stripes and dots, dots together. I did. I, I know, I'm just saying I'm, that's the only, my only rule is going to be not putting the stripes and the dots together. I need 100 inches long by about 14 and a half inches wide as my extra pieced panel. So I have approximately 50 or so two and a half inch strips and that should be the 100 inches I need with the seam allowances, so. <laughs> thanks, thanks Penny. Ray and I were standing in the line at Joanne Fabrics and we saw these hats and we had to buy them. Like we did this weeks ago. Um, so tonight we have two winners of the Ugly Sweater Contest for the show. Um, let's see. I'll see if I can put this up. Do you want to handle this? What did you do? Nothing. Oh. What did you do? Okay, so winner number one. Uh, you guys are going to get um, Christmas ornaments. Actually, not Christmas ornaments because it'll be after Christmas. We're going to do thread cutters, which are these little guys on the front of your machine. So I'm going to send both of my winners thread cutters to thank you for participating in the show. <laughs> Mel says, I hope there's a super cool present on their head. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. It's kind of foamy. <laughs> Hi, Jeanette. Says my phone hates me. Why does your phone hate you? Those are some great graves. All right, winner number one is my buddy Kathleen in SoCal. Thank you so much for sending your picture. I love your sweater. Actually, it's not even ugly. It's kind of pretty, but I understand it's a Christmas sweater, so I'll let it fly. So I'll be sending you out a thread cutter for your featherweight miss kathleen and our second winner is miss mel she sent a picture just a little bit ago <laughs> yay mel i'm gonna send you a thread cutter for your featherweight thanks so much for playing along with us i uh i love when i have crowd participation all right <laughs> all right here Where's the, um, I know, oh, there, okay. So this will at least make the back of the quilt interesting because I just literally bought solid um, black fabric from Northcott. scripts here yay <laughs> Mel I know I think actually Kathleen and Mel I think I have your addresses already in the um 
in my computer because I think I've shipped you guys things before. But do me a favor and just shoot me an email, info, I-N-F-O, at featherweightdoctor.com. And that way I'll just double check that I have the right email address in my computer to get your thread cutters to you. Our thread cutters, um, not to sound like a commercial, but they're pretty awesome. There's several... Um, People, several things people complain about with the featherweights because they're very um, simple machines. The first one is the not having a thread, a threader built in. There's not too much I can do about the, that. But I do, um, but the other thing people don't like is that they don't have thread cutters. Some of the machines do have thread cutters on the shaft, but they're so dull because they're, you know, like 87 years old. Um, they don't really work that well. These are um, made by a company called uh, Thread Cutters with a Z. They were on Shark Tank, and they originally were in business because they were for cutting fishing line when you were fishing. But the mom of the creator um, said, hey, wait a second, I can use that on my featherweight. And so they make these little tiny thread cutters that stick on the front of our face plates. They are a 3M adhesion, and they will not ruin the finish of your um, of your of your faceplate. So they stick right on, um, cutter side up, and that way you just come over and you don't have to have that extra little pair of scissors sitting by your machine. So that is awesome. Thank you guys so much for participating. I appreciate it. I know that there's a lot going on this time of year, so. Well, clearly, if I'm burning the midnight oil to get my son's Christmas present done. <laughs> it's a good thing he doesn't watch this show. Otherwise, he would totally know what is going on. I'm going to make him some pillowcases, too, to match his quilt. Okay. Oh, we weren't supposed to do stripes and circles. It's do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> There's no rules, Ray. We're just... You just said that was the only rule. <laughs> They're not... I don't have any stripes by... Where do I have stripes? By stripes and circles. No, no. That together, not stripes and stripes or polka dots and polka dots. Oh, you said stripes and circles. Sorry. I was not clear with my instructions. so fast. Just be careful, please. My husband was complaining because I haven't done any of my Christmas baking yet because I'm still making a quilt. He, uh, he said, uh, he told my son that he needed to have a talk with me. I'm like, well, I'll just wait till the kids all get home and we'll just do it all together. It'll be much more fun that way. Could you have put the uh, thread cutter on the white featherweight? I don't see why not. Well, actually that, it's painted though, isn't it? Sandy, I wouldn't put it on the white one because I don't, I don't think that would be good for the paint on your face plate. These are chrome, so it's not gonna hurt these, but I wouldn't put it on a white one. I should have made pillowcases for the daughter, Katie two or more, two years ago, maybe tonight. There you go, Mel. I'm gonna do, I almost did that for the show tonight. I'm gonna use that no raw edge method. Um, when a couple of years ago now, when they were doing that 1 million pillowcase challenge, they taught everybody how to do the no raw edge pillowcases. And I haven't done it in so long. I need to like do a little memory exercise to try and remember how to do it. So I'm trying, I was trying not to cut more off of my line work 
fabric yardages. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, I managed to find a bunch of scraps of the line work so I didn't actually have to cut into any more of my... How many do you have? Am I gonna need more? I feel like I'm gonna need more. Nice. Sugar cookie recipe. Let's see here. I'll text you too, but I'll text you about the pillowcases. Okay, that sounds good. How do I move this down? Do you know how to move this down? <gasps> Hi, Della. Merry Christmas from Louisiana. Hi, Bryce. Merry Christmas to you. How do you move that down? Do you know? No, you don't know how to do it? Okay. Burrito pillow. Yes, Judy, it's the burrito pillowcases. How do I? Top chat. Live chat. Okay. There, okay. I think I fixed YouTube so I can see. Elizabeth, I have my sugar cookie recipe. Santa. I, uh, I, uh, it's from a magazine, like, from 2001, maybe, or maybe it might even have been the year 2000. It's a sugar cookie recipe that uses cream cheese, and so, what you doing? Taking a break. I don't She's taking. <laughs> it's the eve of Christmas Eve, woman. We don't have time to take a break. Get sewing. I'm not standing. <laughs> Okay, you watch the comment feed then. Hello, Kathy. On YouTube. Yes, Jennifer. They are fun to make. I totally agree. Welcome to... I don't want to learn more about the privacy. Okay. Oh, here we go. Cream cheese. Yes, cream cheese uh, in the sugar cookie recipe and lots of powdered sugar. So they're really like... Sorry, I know people hate this word. Moist. They're not the crunchy kind. <laughs> Rose says hi. Hello. <laughs> what are you guys working on tonight? Where would I get a pillowcase pattern for my Girl Scout troop would love that project? Linda, I, um, if there isn't one already written, I can write up a quick one in the next week or two. When would you need it by? It's real easy. You basically make like a tube and then when you unroll it, everything is sewn into itself and it's all closed. And then you make a French seam around the two outer edge so you don't even have any right edges there. <laughs> Mal, I said moist again. I'm sorry. <laughs> Linda, look it up online. Okay, if there's already one written, that would be good. It's called a no raw edge pillowcase or a, what else did someone just call it? Mm. It's the pillowcase tube. Oh, burrito pillowcase. 2021. Oh, yeah. I'll... I'll definitely have something written up by then. No problem. Burrito pillowcase. Thanks, Kathy. Kathy, are you and Dan home? Or are you out on the RV? I had this 
a couple machines leave the orphanage this week. My last 222 went out yesterday to our new home in Mesa, Arizona. And then I did a, um, I had this beautiful 49 Centennial, like near flawless um, finish on her. Oh, it's on YouTube. Thanks, Connie. So the burrito pillowcase pattern, Linda, is on YouTube. Or Pinterest. I'm working on bench cushions. 25 years of big <laughs> What? Ah, what's your um? What's your cushions for, Mel? We're at home. He gets tired of being. He gets tired of being home this winter. <laughs> Elizabeth says Christmas here tomorrow, wrapping and moving machines from the dining room. Now, yeah, your collection, Miss Elizabeth. Oh, it's called the French pillowcase. <laughs> you guys are so helpful. Oh, Crafty Gemini has an easy video. Good to know. You guys are so helpful. Okay. Thank you, Kathleen. I was going to put my quilt up on my design wall and then the pieces kept falling off <laughs> and I didn't have 64 pins to hold my 64 blocks on. What you doing? Wrapping. Oh, Ray's going to get to, she's going to wrap some presents while we're here. Cutting bread for filling balls, penna dutch for stuffing. Nice. Cutting bread for filling kitchen L-shaped table bench. Oh, coastal vibe. Very nice. Very nice. I am. Where's your piece? Oh, I'm just gonna add it to mine. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right. Look at that. I'm making huge progress. It's huge. I have to admit, I kind of missed you guys this week. We we're only having this one time together, and then not until next week. And Monday, I was like. Missing you. At least all of my shopping is done. I'm still working on a quilt or two, but at least all of my shopping is done. Ooh, Pen Pennsylvania Dutch for stuffing. Nice, very nice. Ellen, hi Ellen Miller, thanks for joining us. I'm so glad you're on when I can catch you. I finally bought a featherweight. Welcome to the club. I will have to purchase bobbins off of you after Christmas. It is sweet in the original case. That is awesome. I was thinking about doing a whole um, new series of because I think a lot of people are getting new featherweights, not new, obviously, older featherweights, new to them featherweights for Christmas. And I probably should redo that whole thing about what to do, that whole series about what to do when you get your first featherweight. Because there's actually some stuff you need to look out for, like getting her cleaned and, and lubricated properly. And look, with Ray's, I've made a huge dent. Look at that. Um... <laughs> Mel says, I'm impressed. When I sew and entertain, I have tons of mistakes. You and Ray are great. Don't curse me, Mel. I have not run out of bobbin thread. And what was the other thing the machine does? Run out of oh, and I haven't made a mistake yet. <laughs> you just jinx me, lady. <laughs> Hi, Betsy Davis. Thanks for joining us from Maine. Nice. Merry Christmas to you and your family, Darlene, and have a safe, oh, thank you so much. Merry Christmas to you, too. We're going to try to get all, I'm trying to get the rallying the whole family to do a surprise Christmas message. So we'll see if I can get the 21-year-old son to participate. It's a, it's a, it's a 50-50 whether I can get him on or not. When do we pay for the new program? Oh, it's not going to start till the new year. I'm planning on getting the, the entrance fee, the $15 entrance, entrance fee out on the website here in the next week or so, Peggy. So I'll drop a social media like message when that goes on there so you can see when to sign up. 
<laughs> yes, series on your first featherweight would be great. Maybe that'll be like my New Year's, like in January, we'll do a, what to do with your featherweight. That's not a bad idea. Good, good idea, you guys. Christmas here. To, oh, nice, nice, nice. Kathy, we're home. Cindy, hi, Cindy. Thanks for joining us on YouTube. That will be great. I'd love a review. Perfect. Merry Christmas from my, uh, Iowa. Merry Christmas from Seattle. Sunny, sunshiny books. Oh, it's sunny. Hi, sunny. Darlene, video idea. Must have featherweight notions. I like that, you guys. Notion number one, a thread cutter right here. So you don't have to have your little scissors living in front of your featherweight. I like that idea. Rose, we are going to have a white Christmas in East Tennessee. That's awesome. Sign up for what? New Year. Oh, Beth Patrick's like, fill me in, ladies. What's going on? So uh, I do a ongoing Quilt As You Go project with my tribe, my featherweight community. And uh, we just finished a big 17-week one here around well, it was just after Thanksgiving, basically. Uh, and it was called Arizona Sky. Uh, we're rolling into a new one in the new year. It's a, a table runner called Winter Solstice. It's a quilt as you go program. It's gonna run for about 10 weeks and I'm just charging a $15 entrance fee on the front end. And then we'll do a live event every Wednesday in the new year doing one block at a time. So that's what, what everyone's talking about, Miss Beth. Angel from Houston says, a refresher is always great. Great way to start the new year. That's what we're going to do then. What to do with your first featherweight. I like it. Or what to do with a featherweight that you is new to you and you're not quite sure what has been done to it. That's also a very good idea. Those um, We'll probably do those on the Ask the Doctor show, you guys, on Mondays. We'll call it like, so you're new to the featherweight club. Little do they know it's not really a club. It's a cult. It's a, <laughs> did you hear Ray? <laughs> she said it's a cult. No, that in, that has a negative connotation. We're a really enthusiastic well, I know club. Ah, <laughs> Bridget says, Merry Christmas tribe. You guys are awesome. Did you guys see that um, coming in January, I'm going to be teaching one of the speakers and teaching at the Big Sew Expo, which is um, usually a regional show. And this year, because of COVID and us trying to keep ourselves um, healthy, they're going to do it virtually, which means that there is a lot more, you don't have to be local to access all of the excellent teachers and the teaching. I'm one of the teachers. <laughs> so I will be doing a featherweight spa day virtually um, for Sew Expo. The class schedule um, is live now, so you can actually see what classes are available. And then you can start signing up as of January 12th. I'm going to warn you, last year my class sold out in 35 minutes. So if you are at all interested in taking that spa day um, virtually this year from Sew Expo, you need to be on the computer the morning that the calendar drops on January 12th. Um, you, um, Angel, you will totally be able to benefit from the teaching. Um, I'm just going to, if you pay the $15 entrance fee, you get access to the cutting instructions. Um, but I'm going to do the live on the Wednesdays, um, and you'll be able to benefit from the teaching of how... Reagan. I know. You there, guys. There wasn't enough wrapping paper. <laughs> She's going to fix that. <laughs> but you, in order to have the cutting instructions, you have to pay the $15 entrance fee. <laughs> Ellen says, I love your fastener. Thank you. <laughs> I have a feeling you're just keeping... Learn I have a feeling you just keep learning about featherweights because the, as they age, they must be pampered, like all the ladies. Amen, Pam. We all need a little pampering. That's awesome. Yeah, so you'll be able to watch um, the the and get, and gain any like little nuggets from the teaching. But in order to get the cutting instructions, I'm going to do the fifteen dollar entrance fee. <laughs> I'm not ready to make a quilt, but I like to learn. Oh, yes. You, Angel, you'll be able to watch. We're going to do it on Wednesdays. 
this actually might be a good starter thing if you're not quite ready to undertake a whole quilt because you'll be able to do it one little block at a time. It's a little less overwhelming. Okay, how are we doing here? Lots of strips of fabric. So I think I made a good decision today about Cole's batting. You know, here in the great Northwest tundra, I like my quilts kind of heavy and warm. Well, because it gets cold here at night, but my son, <laughs> at least you said, she's using so much tape. Well, gotta make sure it has to be a challenge, together. right? <laughs> she fixed her opening. <laughs> God, that's so funny. Oh my goodness. Let's see. Make sure all the edges are good. So I didn't I knew I didn't want to use so Cole lives in Kihei, which is on Maui, and it's very tropical. Oh, thanks, Ellen. I'm so glad you've learned a lot. That's awesome. Um I not only want these machines taken care of, I want them used. So anything I can do, if you guys have any questions, if you have you're curious about any type of a use question, I would love to be able to answer it for you. I want, these machines want to be run, they want to be sewn, they don't want to be put on a shelf and just adored. Um, although I have machines that I do that too also. So I'm glad that you guys are, are seeing how much we can do with these little antique vintage stitches. <laughs> anyway, so I decided to go with a full polyester um, batting, which will be not heavy, and it has a nice, I had did a low loft polyester, because basically I don't want it to have any warmth at all, because I want him to use it. If I send this all the way back to Hawaii with him, and it's hot, he won't use it. So I want him to be able to use it. Uh. Mel left you a message, honey. <laughs> My mother-in-law used tons of tape on everything. If the package arrived from her, it took a chainsaw. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she said that's her, that's her goal. Let's see. How much do I have? Oh, shoot. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm trying to make a little... Oh. Thing. Okay, look at how far oh. I've gone, you guys. I broke it. Oh. I thought I was done shopping and then I had to go out to Joanne's today to get a batting. And so I went and picked up a couple more things. Okay, of the line work, the lemurs are my favorite. Just in case you guys are curious. They are, it's like totally like cartoony, old comic strip looky. Yeah, that's, that's a word. That's a word. <laughs> Hey, we're making it a word. Alicia Webb, <laughs> I try to be fast. <laughs> uh, Sandy Reitz wants to know what the difference between the 221 and the 222 is. That is one of my favorite questions. So Singer had a um, has two different models of featherweights. The 221, which they made in a large quantity, about 1.2 million 221s were made over their 40-year um, manufacturing 
uh, career from the 30s to the end of the 60s. Um, and they also created in the mid 50s the 222s. The 222s are an elusive creature here in the US because they were made in the European plant and intended for the European market. And what makes them so special other than the fact that they were made in such smaller quantities, only about 100,000, is their entire bed extension slides off. So if you're a, a costumier or a, a sewist, you can have a tight sleeve for, um, for sewing your uh, clothing construction on. The other thing that they that the 222 does that the 221 doesn't do is the feed dogs drop for free motion quilting or for darning. So those are the big differences. The price point is actually is quite different too. The 222s are considerably more expensive. Oh, lots of questions. Hold on. Let's see here. Joanne Fabric, it, Joanne's Fabrics, Sunny, was not a madhouse. I couldn't believe it. I, I thought for sure I was going to be waiting in a line an hour long, and it wasn't that bad. But actually, I've been to the mall uh, a time or two this week, too, and the mall hasn't even been crazy. It's been weird. Uh, Alicia wants to know, with your attention, do you feel you need an additional thread guide? I see you have. Um, so I normally use one of these on my... I usually use a thread stand behind my machine, but Ray and I were both gonna be sewing and I was trying not to have too much stuff on the table, so I just have it sitting on my regular spool pin and I'm not having any trouble. Um, typically though, with this Aurifil, which is a cross wound thread, it, it does better if it comes off the spool like that instead of unwinding. But right now it's not giving me any trouble at all. Um, let's see. Angel in Houston, do so expo, do you have to attend live or no? Um, so you can, they told me, Angel, that you will be able to watch it live and the video will be available for a day or two afterwards, but I don't know what that time frame is. Um, Rose wants to know, will your son be on the show? No, my yes. son will not. <laughs> he is going to come on the show to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. We're going to do an impromptu greeting not on the show. He'll just, we'll, make yeah, a video. we'll make a video on Friday, but he will not be on the show sewing. Although he does know how to work on these because he worked for me when we lived together. He does not have a featherweight with him in Hawaii, but he has actually fixed someone's featherweight for them that since he moved to Kihei. Isn't that fun? Right. All right. Thread, bobbin thread is calling, Mel says. <laughs> 1955, it's when they started, and they also have special badges too. That's right. That's right. You guys are awesome. Awesome. Hi, Kathy Cleveland. Merry Christmas. She's another one of my Pacific Northwest friends. That is nice. What do you think? I like the little hats. <laughs> All right, what am I going to do here? I got one more. This needs not to be squished. Let's do a black strip. You're jingling. <laughs> Do you guys hear the little bell in her hat? So what are y'all making for your Christmas dinner? We're doing a ham. That's what Cole wanted. So a ham it is. I was kind of hoping he said turkey, to be honest with you. I kind of wanted to do another turkey. No, you're ready for ham. Have to do some more pies and cookies. Don't you know we're all Martha Stewart this time of year? <laughs> all right, Chris, what you, or Ray, what are you looking forward to most uh, this week? Can you just call me Chris? No, I was gonna, no. You called me Chris. I didn't need to. <clears throat> 
Nicole and my friend. Oh. Kathy. Oh, beef tenderloin roast. Yummers. Nice, Linda. Quail. Nice. Is quail good? I've never had a quail before. I've seen them. They have those little things on their heads. Cafe Volchi for Christmas. Oh, nice. Oh, is that the one there in Woodenville, Kathy? <laughs> Judy, Merry Christmas, my friends. You guys are so sweet. I bought a small pumpkin for a pie. Nice. Mexican all the way. Bridget, what are you talking about? It's Christmas. So are you doing enchiladas or burritos? What are you doing? My husband cooks the entire meal. Nice rose. Turkey will have some to parents and then to son. Very nice. Oh, that's Totem Lake. I knew that was close. It sounded very familiar. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> You're very cute. Little butterflies. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> Mel says, Me Mexican, I'm in. <laughs> I had my first taste of Mexican food since coming back from Phoenix last night. It was so disappointing. So disappointing. Hi, Allison. <gasps> Welcome. First time joining us. Hello. We are having salmon steaks here. In You're having salmon in Plano? <laughs> that seems a little like I should be having salmon here in Seattle, and you should be having really good steaks there in Plano. <laughs> Well, my name is Darlene and I'm with Feather Rate Doctor and this is my daughter, Ray, and we are basically Feather Rate Doctor. We're a company dedicated to the um, little singer feather weights and making them famous. So I get on once a week, actually three times a week, technically I do a, a viewer show on Mondays. And then we're doing a Quilt As You Go project that will start in January on Wednesdays. And then Friday is my favorite night of the week, which is my sip and sew. And there's a bunch of crazy ladies on here who keep me laughing, and it's my favorite, favorite show of the week, the, the Sip and Sew. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Allison. Jennifer says, we had ham, broccoli, chicken, son-in-law allergic to ham, green beans, potato salad, mashed potatoes, peach salad. Holy guacamole, Jennifer. Um, peach salad, dressing, all delish now. We're all stuff. <laughs> Dang, girl, you're making me hungry. I haven't, it's not quite dinner time here yet on the West Coast. Although it's dark as midnight outside. All right, I should probably check my measurements here. Whew, it's big. Piano keys, where's my tape measure? All right, how many more inches do I have to go? Tamales, pozole, nice, menudo and beans. Girl, I'm coming to your house. <laughs> Beef tenderloin and a ham here. Nice. Very traditional, Jeanette. Okay, let's see here. Do, do, do. I have, well, I'm halfway there. I'm at 50 and a half. Nice. All right, guys. I'm gonna have to jump up before they kick me off. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining me. Oh, so sweet. I thank you very much for wishing Cole a safe flight. He uh, he does not like flying. He's not super enthusiastic about coming. Um, I totally get it too. Melanie says, do you ever see the Northern Lights? Um, we can't really see them very often here because of the fact that um, we have cloud cover 80% of the time. Uh, we'd have to be up in Alaska or in northern Canada to be able to see them regularly. I wish we did. 
Elizabeth says, you think this is crazy? Pizza every year from the best place ever. What? Bruno's. It's, <laughs> it's what the kids want. That's awesome. Merry Christmas, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for watching this year and for being such um, a valued fan. I appreciate you. Even though I revoked your shopping card. Aw, Merry Christmas, Deb. Good. Thank you very much, Miss Kathleen. Merry Christmas, Miss Jackie. Uh, Allison says, I'm a longtime vintage sewing machine collector. Woohoo, sip and sew. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right. I think Allison is a new member of our tribe. That's what I think. <laughs> Are you going to give us your cookie recipe? Post, yes, I will give you my cookie recipe. I'm, I'll put it up on my story. I promise. I probably, um, when I, once the kids get here, we're probably going to do it over the weekend. I'll put my cookie recipe up. Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas with your families, even if it's done virtually. I hope everybody stays safe and happy, and I look forward to talking to you in a week. So we'll have another sip and sew uh, on the eve of New Year's Eve, and we're going to be working on scrappy snowball mugs.